This is my three-ton rude condensing unit. You'll see all this stuff sitting around here because this is no good. This is the evaporator and it was leaking here, 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 here and here. And probably other places too that my leak detector couldn't get to but anyway um, so that was leaking um, I changed the whole coil I tore the case and everything out I put a three ton Goodman case coil in there with a TXV and I just have nitrogen sitting on the unit right now I've just been working on it a little bit in the evenings when I get off work but anyway I just wanted to change the coil and this condenser is in pretty good shape. It runs pretty good, so I don't really want to change it yet. And R22 right now, as of April 2017, is $800 a jug. And this unit holds 93 ounces of R22. So today, I'm going to be converting it to R407C. Got some polyester oil for that. A new liquid line dryer. My Testo 550 with new hoses, a new tip for my torch, my Vito Pro Pack MC tool bag, should have all the tools in it that I'll need, my trusty oxyacetylene torch kit, and some nitrogen with the amazing VN500 nitrogen regulator. So anyway, uh, I don't actually have an oil pump to pump that oil into the system. So I'm going to use a method that I have seen on YouTube before of, of course I would drop that on video, I'm going to pull the compressor out and simply dump the oil, excuse me for a second, simply dump the old oil out, put the new oil in, and do it that way. Since this unit it's pretty easy access to the compressor when you take this cover off. It shouldn't really be too big of a deal. I put these larger Phillips head screws in there because the original screws stripped out. So yeah, just unbraze it here, here, unplug my wires unbolt it and I can pull the compressor right out dump the oil and pour the uh, polyester oil in there here's my control cabinet I've got a 521 hard start in there I didn't need one I mean I wasn't having any problems but uh, I wanted to reduce the inrush current to the compressor and that sure did make a big difference um, it pulls a lot less current on startup now seems to start better and I think I even noticed a little bit of a drop in the electric bill when I did that so yeah I'm gonna take this dryer and change this one right here I'll uh, sand the lines real good with some sand screen here and back here I don't like to unbraze filter dryers because I have heard that when you heat the joint around the dryer whatever may be caught in it can sometimes be released into the system and I've just always been taught that it's better to just cut them out if at all possible and brace your new one in so that's what I'm going to do here because my new one I'll have to cut the lines anyway because my new one is a little bit longer than the old one as you can see there so I'd have to cut the lines anyway so I might as well just go ahead and do it that way um, so anyway I'm going to go ahead and I've got nitrogen sitting on the system right now like I said just to have something sitting on it and sort of a pressure test it's been sitting on there for a few days so I make sure I don't have any leaks I'll go ahead and let the nitrogen off I'll get some flowing through here as I unbraze the compressor and then um, get the oil put in there we'll change the dryer pressure test it again while I'm pressure testing it this time I'll go ahead and change the oil in my vacuum pump because I need to do that and then um, 
I start pulling a vacuum on it. And then I've got a few things I've got to finish up underneath the house. I've got to uh, hook the drain lines up to the new coil and put some uh, insulation on the suction line coming off the coil, insulate the TXV sensing bulb, and that should be about it under the house. And then after I pull the vacuum, I can go ahead and weigh in the charge and start it up. So I will get back to you in just a sec. Let's pull that compressor out. <clears throat> now we'll simply dump the oil out of here and put this in. Pretty straightforward. So I'm going to be dumping the oil from the compressor into my oil drain tank here, which still has the seal footage from my truck and a little bit of diesel fuel and stuff like that in it. So it's, you know, that's just going to get recycled anyway. Um, anyway, hopefully if I set the phone down right here, you'll be able to see what I'm doing. And hopefully it doesn't fall. you can get out of it right there. Now, I'll find myself a funnel and put the PLE oil in there. Alright, so we're ready to put oil in our compressor now. We're going to use a funnel that you know is clean and you don't want contaminants inside the compressor. There's a helicopter going overhead. me doing it but anyway I'm just going to be pouring the PLE oil straight into there pretty straightforward all right we've been on a pressure test here for 47 minutes we've actually risen 1.2 and so I'm pretty sure we don't have a leak we're going to go ahead and let the nitrogen off and put the vacuum pump on it there's the old filter dryer I cut out no one's raised in pressure's back in obviously everything hooked up all that's left is the vacuum and the Refrigerant. And there's the old green coil and the old coil box. Drain pan, cover. Yeah. Been under there since 2000, January 2001. TXV on it. Never did work right. But um anyway, I'd get to head under there and get the new coil, get the drains hooked up, get the lines insulated, get the TXV bulb insulated, and then uh, uh got about a half hour left on the vacuum and we'll be ready to charge it up and start a bit. <laughs> 